Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Resilient Rehab Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Effer, and today we're going to be talking about hinging. We're talking about a couple of cues that I really like to use and understanding how we can get the best out of our hinging and as well as how we can cue some things for people who may be struggling. So when it comes to hinging, it's important to understand some of the mechanics. Now, I understand it may be a little bit hard to visualize these things, but I did do a YouTube video on hip extension, so check that out. I'll put the link in the show notes. It's important to realize that when it comes to hinging, there are certain mechanics that happen at the hip. First thing that needs to happen is the femur needs to be able to internally rotate. Okay, let's just do um, bilaterally just to as a visual. So both hips need to be able to internally rotate. So then the pelvis needs to be able to flex forward. Okay, as the pelvis flexes forward, I need the space in the back of my pelvis to open. So think about the sacrum or the tailbone is moving away from the sit bones. So I've got that type of nutation happening at the sacrum. So I've got tension in the front part of the pelvic floor and I've got more of this relaxation in the back part just so I'm able to open up that space. Now, one thing that I think is miscued or overcued is shift your hips back as you do this hinge. I actually don't like that cue. And the reason for it is that what people tend to do is they overly shift back. And so what their hinge looks like is more of a knee extension. Their feet actually start to roll out because, and their toes start to lift because they're falling backwards. So instead, I prefer having people to have a knee slightly bent and then just think about the, the sit bone moving away from the femur, okay? So if I think the sit bone shifting back versus the sit bone going up towards the ceiling, it's an extremely different movement. And when we're thinking about hinging, the sit bone going up towards the ceiling is exactly what we want because we want the pelvis to go and roll over top of the femurs. We don't want the femurs to actually do the majority of the work. We want the pelvis to be moving over top of the femur. So this is why I really like to use more of a kickstand hinge to teach people how to hinge. And so in my full body program, as well as in my proster program, you've seen me use the variation. It's one of my favorites. I created it just based on the fact that I needed to for this one particular client that no matter what I tried to give him, from a cueing standpoint, it just didn't work. And that is putting my knee into a foam roller on the wall. So not facing sideways to the wall with the foam roller on the inside of the knee, but the knee, but the foam roller directly on the knee facing towards the wall. And what that is going to do is that's gonna lock your femur into place and that's gonna allow you to move your pelvis over top. Because in order for that hinge to happen. Like I said, I need to be able to internally rotate the femur. For that to happen, I need the back of the hip to be open. For that to happen, I need my knee to stay in a slightly flexed position. So the knee pushing into the foam roller keeps that knee flexed, which keeps the back of the hip open. Then all of that by using the foam roller, not letting it fall, I can then just focus on the pelvis actually moving. I don't have to cue knee forward, push your heel, all these other cues. I can just say, hey, don't let the foam roller fall. Just push in the foam roller the whole time. All you're gonna be thinking about is you're gonna bend over like you're bowing. Don't shift your hips back away from the wall. Again, even with this movement, I see a lot of people shifting their hips back with it. I don't want you to shift your hips. Instead, I want you to feel like you're leaning over as though your weight is going into your toes and you've got to put the heel down to slam on the brakes, right? That's how I want you to feel it because that is going to be that true sensation of the lengthening of the glutes. And that is going to allow us to then contract the glutes to drive the hip forward. So in this entire movement, I'm thinking, don't let the knee move, keep pressure through the heel, but allow your weight to travel forward and allow your sit bones to go up. And you, I promise you, you will feel a substantial difference between doing that kind of movement with folding over top of the foam roller versus shifting your hips back. 
So, and I then remove the foam roller, try to get them to do that again. Sometimes they have a hard time elevating their toes is a quick little fix. And as I've mentioned in previous episodes, I don't like to overly cue. So if I can use a constraint like a foam roller, like elevating the toes to put their weight where I want them to be, that's gonna be so much more effective than giving them five cues because they're gonna forget it. But if I give them, okay, you're gonna hold the weight in this hand, you're gonna have the foam roller there, don't lose your heel, fold over. I mean, that's so easy because half of those cues are just to be able to hold that position. And then if I say, okay, I'm gonna take the foam roller away, let's keep that knee flexed. Well, what's associated with knee flexion? Ankle flexion. Okay, so I can elevate the toes with a wedge. I tell them to drive the knee forward. Now fold over that knee, right? I can start to do that. So now I really start feeling the glute. Now some people are gonna have really tense glutes in the back part of the pelvis. That whole pelvis area is gonna be really squeezed. They're gonna have a really hard time accomplishing these movements. And so I actually like doing these in what I like to call a high half kneeling position. So think of your knee is on a bench and then you're starting to do your hinges in that position. And so what I'll even do is I'll say, put your left knee on a bench, your right leg is out to the side like a lateral lunge, pushing you to the left. And then maybe just to decompress the back of the hip a bit more, hold on to a couple of cables and then allow the cables to win as you push your knee into the pad and get as tall as you can the whole time. And again, you'll feel the same sensation. But having that push on the outside leg turns the hips that way, which again, opens up the back part of the pelvis, right? So if I were to give you my top cues, it would be have the knee over the knuckles of the toes or over the laces while keeping heel heavy. Then fold over your knee. Don't let your knee shift back. Don't let your knee move as you start to fold over and bring the sit bone away from the femur. Then as you come up, don't let that knee come back. Instead, drive the knee forward as your hips come through. Again, you want the pelvis to be moving over top of the femur. You don't want the femur to be moving relative to the pelvis. That way we can get the certain areas that we want. So thank you so much for listening. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope these kind of cues helped you. I know they help a lot of my clients. And using constraints, using the wedges, using the foam rollers, using the cables, they are a game changer. I would not... I would highly recommend using those before overly cueing. I look forward to seeing you next time. Really hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for listening.